Hey everyone, this is part two in the HBridge uh, KiCad circuit board tutorial. The first part we did the schematic layout and part selection. In this one we're going to go into the actual physical circuit board layout itself. Uh, before that, one thing I want to ask you guys. I received a suggestion about a future series to where you guys would send me circuit board layouts or schematics or something like that and I would go through them in a video and kind of say what I don't like, what I like, what could be changed, improved and I just kind of roll with that a couple, two, three each video. If you like that let me know in the comments and we can figure out some way to get going with that. Uh, with that said we can jump into part two of this video. So where we left off, we had the schematic uh, created, and I forget if I went into a ERC or not, but we can do the ERC, run it, we have no errors, and then we can uh, annotate the components, which I already did. You can see they're all labeled here, and after that, you need to assign the PCB footprints to each uh, component which I did basically just with pre-made parts other than the SMA components, everything else, and this uh, capacitor. Everything else was found in the KiCad libraries just to make it easier. So after we get that all set, we're ready to save our netlist, which is just telling uh, PCB new where all the components are, the pins, the connections, everything like that. So you generate that and it saves it to the uh, same project root file. So once we have everything there, we can open up a new KiCad PCB file. And the first thing I like to do once I get this up is to set all the design rules for the fab house I'm using. So the global design rules are basically what no other net can go smaller than. So you can make these a different size as long as they're bigger than what are on the global design. So what I'm gonna use for the track width is six mils. For the via diameter is uh, 13 mils. And the drill, uh, this is 27 and this is 13. And these are what most of the like hobbyist type uh, board fabs will use like an Osh Park, uh, PCB zone, places like that. So now on this side, we can adjust what the individual nets will be. You can use a net class membership also once we read the net list, but I personally find that to be a waste of time and I just use the net class override here uh, and just adjust it for each trace that I'm working on. So even though our clearance globally is six mils, I like to make the clearance here a little bit bigger just because if you can get away with it uh, being bigger, it's always better to. And then for the via diameter, we'll do something like uh, 15 mils and the via, uh, the via drill is 15 mils and the via diameter is 30 mils. And the micro vias and differential pairs we're not using, so they shouldn't matter. And then the last thing is to do the solder mask clearance and the value that I'll use for this is two mils. Again, it's a good uh, estimate for what most uh, board houses can at least do. And the units, you're always going to want to make sure are in inches. I already had it set from the last project I was doing, but you always want to have it on inches rather than millimeters. Um, it's just what kind of the universal standard is. So now you go to read current net list and it puts all of our components on the board. This is one really nice thing KiCad 5 does that the previous versions didn't, is it automatically spreads them out. And once all of the 
part are on the board, what I like to do is turn the fab layer off just so you're not uh, selecting those uh, labels when you don't want to. And then now for most layouts, I like to place them all in groups. But since this is a pretty straightforward uh, board, I can probably just place them all at once. Um, so that's what I'll do now. I have a decent idea of how I want the layout already. So I'll just go through and place them. Okay, so now the uh, basic uh, placing of all the parts is done. Now, uh, what I like to do is get an idea of the exact outline of the uh, board itself. And for this, bump up the grid to like 50 or 100 mils. Uh, with the grid, basically you want to use the coarsest, so the biggest uh, spacing you can and still route how you want just because it helps keep everything aligned so with this um, go to a graphic line on the edge cut layer and space it about here and draw your outline and that is where the fab house will cut the outer edge of the board and now we can put a uh, pour for the top and bottom ground layer, uh, set ground, and I'm gonna use thermals for this. Uh, if you're using a reflow oven or a reflow skillet, anything like that, you don't have to use thermals, uh, but most people on something like this, you're gonna want to just because it makes it easier to solder. And the easiest way to get it on the top and bottom layer is to select the one you just did and duplicate it and then edit it and set that to bottom so now we have a copper pour on the bottom and the top and a quick shortcut is if you press b it fills the zones and control b it unfills them because it gets a little confusing trying to route the uh, layers route all the traces when the copper pours are in your way so with this, what I like to do is start with all the power traces first, and we can start with the 12 volt line. Now, typically for something like this, I would use a, uh, a polygon fill, but for the sake of time, and since it's only like an amp, we'll be plenty fine using a uh, 25 uh, or 30 mil trace width. You can use online calculators, which make the calculation of your width really easy. But for something like this, I notice off the top of my head, this is plenty and more actually than we need. So we can route these here. And I think we need a 12 volt line here like that. And now route this up to here and have it hit into that stub like that. Okay, so now our 12 volt power is ran. We can drop the trace width down to 12 mils and run to our decoupling cap, which as always we wanna place as close as possible to the IC itself. 
so it can decouple from the noise of the power supply uh, the best it can. So we'll run that here and to here. And if it ever does that where it kind of kinks on the trace, you can usually just run it from the other side and it won't do that. Um, and then keeping our 12 uh, mil trace width, we can route all of our logic inputs, which is pretty straightforward. And a big thing with routing and PCB layouts in general, you spend at least a, uh, an experienced board designer will pretty much spend as much, if not more time on making the board look pretty than actual functionality just because the layout itself of most boards is pretty easy but making everything really symmetrical and line up is what takes a lot of time and that just kind of depends if you're just doing one-offs for yourself you really don't have to get too carried away with it but when you're doing like a production made board you want everything to line up and look good so that's why a lot of the things on boards, you, you, you take the extra time to make everything line up and be symmetrical. So now we have our inputs and all of our power ran. And now really all that's left is to do our uh, motor outputs. And for this, since we're going from a through hole to a big pad, we can really make these traces as big as we want. So we can do 20 again or 25 and just route these two and route this maybe straight up to here. With this, it really doesn't matter um, where you're routing them to as long as they line up nicely. So now we have these, and now the last thing with the outputs is to route it to the IC. And since it's a small uh, pitch on here, we're not gonna be able to run the 25 mil uh, trace to it. So what I like to do is just use a smaller, like a little stub to where you run a 15 mil trace out of here. And let's get rid of the pour. And what this allows us to do is to still get a lot of the benefit of a wider trace, but can still have it go into a fine pitched uh, component like this. So we have our 15 mil stubs coming out and now we can go back to a 25 mil trace for our main and run these, uh, the B1 will go out around and connect here. And then our B2 will connect here. And these traces, again, are way bigger than they need to be, but since we have the space, you might as well use it, even though it's not necessary. And route this to here and fill that in. And now we have an issue with our ground not being connected to any of the uh, uh, connections from our top ground pour. And there's a few ways you can remedy this. One way is to go to our clearance and our width and change the minimum width here to be what our width of the actual board itself is and change the clearance to be the same as well and that'll allow this to connect or you can just run a trace out from here either one will work um, since that seemed to work pretty well we can just keep that uh, but it's kind of up to you and with that, I believe that is the last part of the board. So we can do our DRC. And since one thing we need to, uh, I need to talk about is since we have a super fine pitch component here and on the 
design rules, I'm using a bigger clearance than is our global. We have to change this clearance back to six mils, delete all of our markers, and do the design rule check again, and see that there are no issues. So it's always a good practice, and it's what I always do on my boards, is to make the clearance that I'm using bigger than what is actually allowed by my fab house, just because uh, it's like making the traces bigger. If you can do it, you might as well. Uh, it's not ever gonna hurt the board itself, but you just have to make sure to change it back when you do the DRC. So that pretty much wraps up this board. Uh, it's a pretty basic layout. All of these are just standard uh, pitched components with pin headers. If you wanted to get fancy, you can use different types of connectors or anything for what you're doing. And also one last thing is to go through and obviously change the silk screens of all of the components. So when you're soldering, you know where everything goes. And you could also label these uh, like motor positive, motor negative, logic in five volt and ground and then our outputs here. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna leave it like this. So I hope you enjoyed, and if you have any suggestions for future videos or any comments, as always, comment and let me know. Thank you.